The National Desk, America's News Now. Breaking news, federal agents shoot and kill a man in Utah who made threats against the president just hours before Biden's visit to the state. And also breaking tonight, Maui under evacuation. Right now, as wildfires spread, some residents are finding refuge from fire and smoke in the ocean. Uh, devastating for so many of us, two of my islands in my district on fire. Um, such fear um, overcoming so many individuals. Then, new revelations in special counsel Jack Smith's January 6th investigation into Donald Trump as Trump's 2024 rival Ron DeSantis suspends an elected Florida prosecutor in a move critics say is politically motivated, but DeSantis saying this. Prosecutors have a duty to faithfully enforce the law. One's political agenda cannot trump this solemn duty. This is the National Desk America's News Now. I'm Eugene Ramirez, and we have breaking news off the top here. FBI agents shooting and killing a Utah man accused of threatening President Joe Biden ahead of his trip to that state. Now, this happened as agents tried to take Craig Deleu Robertson into custody at a Provo residence. An arrest warrant was issued after Robertson threatened to kill Biden, FBI agents, and others. The FBI is investigating. And now this comes as President Biden is about to visit Utah. And he was in New Mexico earlier today speaking at a revamped wind tower manufacturing facility. His remarks mark one year since the Chips and Science Act was signed into law. He touted Bidenomics as he highlighted U.S. clean energy policies. Developing now, at least six people are dead and dozens hurt as multiple wildfires burn through the island of Maui and Hawaii's Big Island, destroying several buildings, also closing down roads and prompting evacuations. Uh, several people have been flown to the island of Oahu to be treated for burns. Uh, the Coast Guard has been rescuing some people who jumped into the ocean just to escape the flames. The Hawaii National Guard is supporting first responders tonight following an emergency proclamation from the lieutenant governor there. Uh, yesterday, more than 14,000 people in Maui were without power this morning, and 911 service was unavailable for many. Now, much of the popular tourist destination, uh, Lahaina Town, has been engulfed in flames, fanned by high winds there. Meantime, firefighters still putting out a brush fire in a suburb outside Austin, Texas. Uh, this one started yesterday. As of this morning, it was about 15% contained. Now, you can see some of the destruction that it's caused. It's burned down an apartment building and damaged several. Several other structures, residents in multiple townhomes, apartments and businesses were told to leave. Many Americans still facing extreme heat right now with about 60 million people under heat alerts. Hazardous temperatures in much of the south are expected to continue through next week. Parts of the northwest could also face dangerous heat starting this weekend into the next week. In the meantime, parts of the north are 10 to 20 degrees below average. There's a new federal system to track heat-related illnesses nationwide. The White House unveiled the EMS heat tracker to map emergency services responding to heat-related illnesses uh, around the country. Now, it will break down patient characteristics by age, race, gender, and uh, their location, uh, so officials can then learn which populations are most at risk. New tonight, a newly unsealed court filing shows that special counsel Jack Smith got a search warrant for former President Trump's Twitter account, now, this was reportedly related to the 2020 election case. Uh, Twitter, now called X, was prohibited from informing Trump after months of litigation. The company was fined $350,000 for turning over the records late. Now, Donald Trump responded today on his Truth Social social media platform, posting that this was a major hit on his civil rights and his political opponent is going crazy trying to infringe on his campaign for president. He concluded, these are dark days in America. Meanwhile, indictments stemming from the Georgia 2020 election case could come as soon as next week. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis has been lining up witnesses and is set to present her case before the grand jury uh, over two days next week. Sources told CNN that Willis could more, uh, have more than a dozen indictments presented, uh, potentially uh, racketeering charges as part of them. 
New tonight, American nurse Alex Dorsonville and her daughter are now free after being kidnapped in Haiti. Remember, we told you when it first happened. Uh, the Christian nonprofit that she was working for said there's still a lot to process and heal from. Uh, Dorsonville and her child were taken by armed men in Port-au-Prince about two weeks ago. Uh, gang violence there in Haiti has surged, and uh, especially in Port-au-Prince, a local organization there says that there's been 539 kidnappings just since January. Today, the State Department said it welcomed the news. We welcome the reports of their release. We have no greater priority, of course, than the safety and security of U.S. citizens overseas. Uh, we express our deepest appreciation to our Haitian and U.S. interagency partners for their assistance in facilitating for their, uh, their safe release. Taking a look at your money now, the job market is strong and inflation is starting to come down. Uh, polls show how the public feels about the economy, though, isn't improving a whole lot. The National Desk Center for Elnishar takes a closer look ahead of a key inflation report that's due out Thursday. On paper, inflation is a lot better than it was this time a year ago. A message President Biden has been spreading on the road all summer. We have more to do, but inflation is now at its lowest point in two years. Overall, consumer prices have been on a steady decline from their peak of 9.1% in June of last year down to 3% in June of this year. But relief is hard to square with a national average gas price of $3.82 and unpredictable food prices subject to the volatility of extreme weather and Russia's war in Ukraine. For some items, shrinkflation, less product for the same price, is the new normal and has prompted a social media trend of looking for products with reduced content. Doritos bags used to be 9.75 ounces, now they're 9.25 ounces. According to a recent CNN SSRS poll, 44% of adults say economic issues are most important to them. And 75% rate the economy as poor. 63% disapprove of how President Biden is handling the economy. The White House pushing back. Polls don't tell the, the entire story. We're going to continue to tell our story, tell what we have done in the past two years. The administration frequently pointing to growing wages, which recently started outpacing inflation, a boon for workers that some at the Federal Reserve say could perpetuate inflation and push them to raise interest rates even higher. Moody's Analytics chief economist Mark Zandi. One way you do that is you try to slow things down uh, so that the uh, you know uh, businesses don't raise their prices as aggressively. Now, tomorrow morning, when the Labor Department releases July's Consumer Price Index, economists expect it will reflect a 3.3 percent increase in prices from the year prior, still a ways off from the Fed's target rate of 2 percent. A ways off. Uh, obviously, some, some work to, still to be done there. Uh, but, Atra, today we also got data about U.S. oil output under the Biden administration. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Right. So the Department of Energy put out new projections that this year the United States will average an output of 12.8 million barrels per day. That is a record higher than any other administration than we've seen in any other administration. Eugene, even higher than what Saudi Arabia puts out, according to OPEC data. Now, this could be a double edged sword for, for the president. Uh, of course, it uh, really you know, makes it harder for his political opponents to argue that he's waged this war on fossil fuels. Uh, but at the same time, the president's really advocating for this clean energy agenda. You saw it today in New Mexico. So we don't necessarily expect the president to be touting this, maybe just use it as ammunition against any attacks on him. Uh, but also remember that oil's priced globally, so it's not necessarily going to translate into direct relief at the gas pump. Yeah, in some cases, people viewing this depending on uh, what they believe is most important uh, in this case. Dr. Elnishar in Washington tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Ohio will not move forward with a measure that would make it more difficult to change the state constitution. Voters rejected that measure that would require a 60 percent supermajority to pass future constitutional amendments. Now, those who wanted the measure said a higher requirement would protect Ohio's constitution from outside interest groups. But those against it, the critics said that the measure was meant to take away voters influence. Voters saw issue one for what it was, a deceptive power grab designed to silence our voices and diminish our voting power. I'm uh, personally very disappointed. Um, I think it's a question that was worth asking of the voters. The state will keep a simple majority threshold for passing future constitutional amendments. Now, this special election would have major implications for the battle over abortion rights, even though that wasn't on the ballot specifically. In November, Ohio residents will vote on a constitutional amendment to protect abortion rights there. It's also possible that ballot initiatives uh, like the one in Ohio could play out in some other states that allow them.
In Dallas, the search continues now for at least three suspects who ambushed and shot an undercover officer conducting surveillance early this morning. The officer was able to escape before the attackers stole his vehicle, then fled the scene. The good news, though, the officer was released from the hospital after being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. A 19-year-old Amazon warehouse employee in Chattanooga, Tennessee, recovering today after being shot in the face at close range this morning while at work. He's currently in critical condition at the hospital. Police called it a targeted attack. The suspect is unknown and on the loose right now, but police say they do not expect them uh, to be a danger to the community at large. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has suspended the top state prosecutor in Orlando, Florida, uh, 9th Judicial Circuit State Attorney Monique Worrell, uh, accusing her of being soft on crime and lenient toward violent criminals. Now, Refusing to faithfully enforce the laws of Florida puts our communities in danger and victimizes innocent Floridians. Orrell argues her prosecution rate is similar to her predecessors and warns DeSantis is pushing the limits of his authority, calling him a weak dictator. DeSantis tapped Orange County Judge Andrew Bain, a conservative, to replace her. This is now the second time that DeSantis, who's running for president in 2024, has removed an elected Democratic state attorney. An existing San Francisco law allows for non-citizen parents to vote in local school board elections. A state appeals court has ruled. Uh, the law, Proposition N was approved in 2016, but was later struck down. Under the new ruling, 125 char charter cities can now pass measures approving non-citizen voters. California Senator Dianne Feinstein is back at home today after a night in the hospital. Her office said in a statement that the 90-year-old senator had a minor fall last night and was hospitalized only as a precaution. All scans were clear, they said. As senator Feinstein has indicated she will not run for re-election, but has 17 months still left in her current term. Coming up here on the National Desk, new developments about the Biden family's foreign business deals. What's in a newly released memo? Then large numbers of migrants from Haiti staying at hotels across the state of Massachusetts following an emergency declaration there. What city leaders are saying about that situation? And participants of a cybersecurity challenge from the Defense Department will work to use AI to help defend the country. The major cash reward the winner will receive. Severe storms again threatening millions of Americans tonight. Multiple intense thunderstorms with tornadoes, damaging winds, and some hail could hit an area of the U.S. from the Ozarks all the way to the Tennessee Valley. And now flood alerts are also in effect for parts of several states. And President Biden telling the Weather Channel this morning that he has practically already declared a national emergency over climate change, though he stopped short of making it official. Are you prepared to declare a national emergency with respect to climate change? I've already done that. National, we've conserved more land. We've moved in. The, we've rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. We've passed the $368 billion climate control facility. So you've already declared that national emergency. Practically speaking, yes. Yeah. 
Well, declaring a national emergency would unlock far-reaching executive powers like halting crude oil exports, limiting oil and gas drilling in federal waters, and boosting renewable energy resources. The president considered a declaration last year before he passed his Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which included several measures to combat climate change. And several lawmakers and activists argue the declaration is still needed, but others say it could hurt business. U.S. mortgage rates jumped over 7% today. That's the highest level since November of last year and the second highest in 22 years. Now, this comes from data from uh, Mortgage Bankers Association, which also indicated that home sale applications dipped to the lowest level since February. Industry experts tied this increase to Fitch ratings downgrade of the United States government debt. Trouble in the auto industry could be headed to Canada as Unifor, Canada's largest private sector union, opens negotiations with Detroit's big three automakers, seeking stronger pensions and better wages in a new contract. The current deal ends September 18th. In the meantime, in the U.S., negotiations between uh, the United Auto Workers Union and Detroit's big three have stalled right now. During a Facebook live stream, UAW uh, President Sean Fain called the proposal from Stellantis a slap in the face. The union has told workers they should be willing to go on strike. Today, James Comer, the House Oversight uh, and Accountability Chairman, released a redacted memo allegedly showing the Biden family received more than $20 million in foreign payments in business dealings with individuals in Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. Now, this memo attacks the Democrat uh, uh, point of view that uh, none of these payments were made to Joe Biden himself, stating, quote, the law recognizes payments to family members to corruptly influence others can constitute a bribe. The committee has yet to tie the president to any wrongdoing doing uh, while his administration continues to deny, of course, on these allegations. Today, President Biden authorized new restrictions on high-tech U.S.-based investments in China. He signed an executive order that will cover advanced computer chips, microelectronics, quantum information technology, and AI. Administration officials say it's to protect national security. One of the biggest corporate credit raters will no longer hand out scores for how green or uh, diverse a company is. National correspondent Kayla Gaskins joins us with more from Washington. The S&P dropping ESG scores. Since 2021, S&P Global assessed corporate borrowers' environment, social, and government risks as part of their credit rating. The reversal seen as a win for conservatives, growing increasingly critical of the practice. I think it's about time that people who are supposed to have a fiduciary duty to their clients and are supposed to be accurately rating risk do so in, instead of trying to go down these politically inspired rabbit holes. Last fall, a group of Republican states attorneys generals launched an investigation into S&P's ESG scoring system for potential violations of consumer protection. Texas AG Ken Paxton writing, ESG evaluations appear to politicize what should be a purely financial decision. To me, this is ironic because Ken Paxton and the attorney generals are bringing politics into the private investing decisions of individuals. University of Michigan's business school professor Tom Lyon has studied ESG ratings for years. Research has shown that ESG ratings help predict future environmental problems, violations, and monetary penalties. So investors see them as useful to help them do a better job of evaluating investments. Meanwhile, Target facing a lawsuit from stockholders who blame backlash from the company's ESG and DEI initiatives, like the family-themed summer LGBTQ plus line, for the recent $12 billion loss of share value. There certainly is a case to be made here that the people in charge have abandoned their duty to their clients, again, in this case, the shareholders. Analysts point out Target's stock drop and struggling sales are more likely due to stubborn inflation that has changed spending habits. As for S&P's changes, companies will continue to receive an ESG assessment from S&P, although through a written narrative rather than a numerical score. Officials say changes will go into effect immediately. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Developing now, certain Ram pickup trucks are being looked into for safety issues. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is now investigating reports that some older Ram 1500 pickup trucks can lose power steering assistance without any warning. This probe covers more than 1.1 million 2013 to 2016 model trucks. The agency says it's gotten 380 complaints so far.
Former Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Henry Ruggs could spend the next 10 years in prison. Ruggs pleaded guilty in May to driving drunk in November of 2021 and reaching speeds of more than 150 miles per hour before killing 23-year-old Tina Tintor and her dog when her vehicle burst into flames after the crash. At the sentencing today, Ruggs apologized to the woman's family for their pain and suffering. He's eligible for parole after three years. The National Desk is taking uh, the pulse of America now. And right now, migrants from Haiti are staying at hotels and motels all across Massachusetts. Governor Maura Healey has issued a state of emergency, saying the state is overwhelmed. Some city leaders say they were left out of the entire process. It, it's been a challenge, especially the way it all started, where we didn't know about it, and our hotel got closed down, um, you know, without our um, consent and knowledge. The mayor said the city was misled about the number of migrants that would be staying at the hotel, and she believes the facility is now over capacity. Governor Healy is calling on the federal government to help expedite work permits for these migrants, but that could take months. Medical experts say the average healthy adult should drink about three to four liters of water a day. That equals those six water bottles right there. But there is such a thing as drinking too much water. It's called water toxicity. Recently, an Indiana mom died after drinking just four bottles of that water in 20 minutes. Dr. Savannah Chavez says this is all it takes to sometimes throw your body off. The sodium level be in a certain range and when you start going outside of that range, because you've had too much water, thereby decreasing your sodium concentration, things start to go haywire. And charges have been filed against 20-year-old Evan Thomas Miller after he allegedly crashed into the second story of a house in Mifflin County, Pennsylvania. Miller was reportedly driving at a high speed when that car went airborne. EMS personnel say that he left the car for the crash and started running around saying he wanted to hurt himself because he saw demons and thought he was one. He later growled at a cop and kicked a security guard in the leg after being taken to the hospital. Coming up here on the National Desk, participants of a uh, uh, cybersecurity challenge uh, will use AI to help defend the country. The major cash reward the winner will receive. The Department of Defense is creating a cybersecurity challenge worth a total of $18.5 million in rewards in an effort to use artificial intelligence, AI, to increase security tools for all Americans. Now, starting in the spring of 2024, 20 participants will work to build an AI system that can, quote, detect and defend critical infrastructure and software from cyber attacks. The challenge was issued today at the Black Hat Conference in Las Vegas. The top prize winner, get this, it's a $4 million prize. And that winner will be announced at the 2025 DEF CON conference. Why can't you stay young forever? Uh, but new research to show how to slow the aging process down at least a bit. Medical reporter Liz Bonas shares the top four habits of highly healthy super agers. 
Hey there, hello to you. Super agers are people who seem to age gracefully from the inside out. By the time they are 70 or 80 years old, they have the brain and body of a person decades younger. Ready, set, go. In addition to that, they appear to lose less brain volume over time with at least four healthy habits, according to researchers at Northwestern University. I wasn't trying to, but I lost 10 pounds. I gained six pounds in muscle mass. I lost visceral fat. The first is what Kathleen Alter started doing about a year ago at Ohio's Activate Brain and Body Fitness Center. She stepped up her physical activity. The super agers had behavioral patterns earlier in life to help them slow the aging process of their brain. That means exercise science specialist Adam Ortman says they started these habits. So in their 30s, their 40s, their the 50s. Moms Aaron and Danielle got that message. We are. We are in the top five young people. They've also picked up super ager habit number two. They challenge themselves. So tell me about that. Tell me about the brain benefit. So as a mom of three and multitasking and doing a lot of things, this is a time to like come here and focus on me. If you can work brain and body at the same time. And you have to remember the pattern that they lit up and hit that pattern. This dual task training builds what's called cognitive reserve which is essentially like a savings account for your brain. The third habit of highly healthy superagers is that in addition to building body and brain... I've noticed that I'm improving things that I can do, whether it's recall, memory, uh, following instructions, sort of things like that. They occasionally indulge, whether it's a glass of wine or a weekly dessert. Those who moderately splurge as part of an active lifestyle appear to be less likely to develop memory problems and Alzheimer's with age. Finally, super agers are super social. When researchers study their brains, they appear to have four to five times the number of certain neurons linked to social awareness. This compared to the average person the same age. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Back to you. Pretty neat, right? Next, ESPN getting into sports betting, how it works when we come back here in 90 seconds. Check this out. ESPN is now getting into sports betting with a $1.5 billion deal. It's an existing sports betting app uh, that Penn Entertainment owns that will now be rebranded as ESPN Bet. The agreement includes exclusive rights to the ESPN name for 10 years, and ESPN gets rights worth about $500 million to buy Penn shares. Basically, Penn operates the app. ESPN promotes it. That's it for us right now. Join me tonight for the evening edition of the National Desk. Check your local listings for the time. I'm Eugene Ramirez. Thanks for watching.